Saunas have been used in almost all cultures since ancient times. They have been common throughout Europe and especially in Finland since the Middle Ages. Despite the many health benefits attributed to saunas, they have been largely relegated to spas, gyms, and expensive hotels. Until now. In this instructable, I'll show you how to build your own personal sauna for under $100 and you don't have to add a special room to your house. It sets up in minutes and is so easy you can take it with you camping. Let's get started. I suspect you could get all of the consumables you'll need in one trip to the hardware store, though I ordered all the small parts online. The PVC pipe is all standard schedule 40 white pipe. The tarp needs to be cut into a long, mostly rectangular strip at the top of the diagram shown. That will wrap all the way around the middle and two quarter circle edge pieces for the sides. The rectangular piece has a split at one edge and flares out so they can overlap to close. While I had the sketch of the design, I modified the dimensions as I worked to ensure proper fit. To that end, I suggest only cutting the rectangular piece at this time. I hem the cut edges of the tarp because I thought it would last better and look better. Looking back, I think this was totally unnecessary for my tarp. The cut edges don't look to fray. If I were to do it again, I'd let, I wouldn't hem them. If it did become a problem, you can always get another tarp and repeat this step. Think of all the time you can enjoy your sign instead of sewing. If you do decide to hem, be sure to expand the tarp dimensions to account for the hem. At the top of the slit, cut a round hole the size of your neck. I sewed a piece of scrap fabric around the edge where it touched my neck, besides adding some class. And nothing says class like sitting in your personal sauna. I think this might be worth the effort for the additional comfort. I'm not much of a seamstress, so it gave me a chance to practice my sewing, and it didn't take long given I already had the machine set up. Cutting the PVC pipe. Let's start with the one inch PVC. You'll need two 40 inch pieces for the uprights, two 38 inch pieces for the floor, and three horizontal pieces that are 30 inches long each. Cut the half inch pipe into two 60 inch pieces. The lengths mentioned previously are my final dimensions, but the cut long and recut approach often works better for me than trying to be accurate and ending up with something too small. Assemble all the pieces together as shown, but don't cement them just yet. You can bend the half inch pieces if you force them, but they won't like it. Try wrapping the center tarp section around to test the fit. You'll likely need some of those snap clamps to gauge the fit. Adjust the PVC links as needed so that the tarp overhangs the edges on both sides by a few inches and overlaps itself near the bottom by a few inches. Here I'm adjusting both the width and the length to ensure the proper overlap. tried to assemble the PVC in the previous step, you'll know that the arches were under considerable strain. In this step, 
We'll bend them so they fit without Herculean effort. First measure or calculate the straight line hypotenuse of the triangle formed by the four pieces in the uprights. There are several ways to bend PVC. I find that using boiling water is the fastest and easiest. Relocate to some place where spilled water isn't a problem. Place the reducer bushings on the end of the half inch pipe. This is important, as otherwise the ends may deform enough to make it difficult to fit the bushings later. Thread some rope through the arch pieces and tie it such that the exposed string is roughly equal to your hypotenuse. Put your gloves on and pour boiling water into the pipe. You may need a funnel for this step, depending on your kettle. Place the pipe someplace where they will hold the water while they cool. This should only take about five minutes, after which the pipe will be permanently bent and hold their shape. Assemble the PVC frame, flip on the side, and use it as a template to cut the edges. Just be sure to allow plenty of extra, at least 6 inches, to wrap around the PVC pipe and overhang on all sides. As your frame is taller than it is deep, mark the top corner for easier, easier assembly later. folded the corners to fit fairly tightly and sewed them as shown. If you have access to a sewing machine, I recommend taking the time to do this. You can even hand sew this. They make the assembly quicker and ensure that the heat and moisture stay inside the sauna. You should be ready to cement some of the PVC fittings together now. I chose to only cement the fittings to the horizontal pieces so that I could transport and store the sauna easier. I also cemented the bushings to the end of the half inch PVC. assembly step for the sauna is to mark the positions for the velcro strips that will seal the front slit and along the bottom seam. 
Stick them on and sew them if you wish. My original plan was to fashion an alternative lid for a rice cooker or slow cooker with a pipe to channel the steam into the sauna. However, however, on initial testing, the sauna didn't heat up enough with my small slow cooker. Or maybe I wasn't patient enough. The stress of the build was really getting to me. Instead, I located a larger 20-quart slow roaster and just sat it under the chair using the lid to separate my legs from anything hot. This approach worked much better, quickly raised the internal temperature to 50 degrees Celsius and enough humidity. Exercise caution to keep hot things away from plastic and people. I encourage you to experiment with whatever approach provides you with the safety and heat you desire. You can buy commercial infrared heaters for this application if you wish. There, you're all done. Now it's just time to enjoy your sauna. You may want to consider one or more optional things to increase the pleasure. First, maybe you want to add handholds or a pocket for something to hold something to read. I was pleased with the addition of some ultrasonic mist makers to increase the humidity of the sauna, and perhaps more importantly, the addition of some essential oils in the water introduces some aspects of aromatherapy. Mine have some lights that add to the ambiance as well inside the sauna. And finally, who can relax when you're feeling guilty about something not getting done? Now, now you can be confident that while you are sweating out those toxins, you are also accomplishing a needed task at the same time. Throw some rice and celery and herbs into that cooker. By the time you're finished your meditation, you'll be halfway done with dinner. The addition of some herbs also adds up the aromatherapy factor. Okay, I admit, I kind of built this as a joke. After all, you do look kind of goofy with your head poking out of something from a 1970 British sci-fi show. What surprised me, though, was how well it actually worked. Now, please excuse me while I have to go for a sauna session and contemplate how to brag about my new sauna to my brother-in-law.